Okay, so we are going to continue to talk about our gene regulation today. Uh, still keep in mind everything we went over last time with the operons. We had our promoter, our operator, all our uh, structural genes, and we also had our repressor. Now, we're going to still talk about the repressor a little bit. So the repressor, if it's bound, it's pretty much turned off. The operon is turned off, we're not going to get any products out of it. If the repressor is not bound to the operon, not at the operator site, RNA polymerase can go, it can do its job, everything is good. All right. Now, we're going to talk about something where RNA polymerase can uh, increase or accelerate its transcription. So, like I said, last time we just talked about on and off, and that was it. But what if we can speed it up? All right. So, this is going to be when uh, glucose is not readily available. All right, so if glucose is available, none of this is really going to be worried about. Remember, guys, glucose is going to be used for getting energy for that organism. So glucose is very important. If glucose is low, we want to transcribe as fast as possible so we can get some energy going. This is when this slide is going to come into play. So we are going to have... CAP, which is going to be an activator, and this is going to be upstream from our promoter and our operator. And what CAP is going to do is it's going to accelerate our transcription, but it's not going to do it unless it's activated. So there is another molecule called uh, cyclic AMP, or CAMP for short. Uh, it stands for cyc uh, cyclic uh, adenosine monophosphate. So it's kind of like ATP and ADP, uh, but it's in, it's in a uh, ring form and it's also only contains one phosphate instead of three in ATP or two in ADP. But regardless, what this is going to do is this uh, CAMP and CAP binding is going to increase the rate of our transcription. So like I said, when our glucose levels are low, CAP and CAMP are going to uh, be binding to our operon. But if glucose levels are high, we don't have to worry about this. Uh, we will just have transcription proceed as normal because we are in no rush to get our glucose. We still have enough energy to do whatever we need to do. Oops. So here is our operon. Now, the clear guy, that's our RNA polymerase. Our operator here, this is where our repressor can bind. Now, regardless of anything, if our repressor is bound, RNA polymerase, ain't, it ain't doing anything. All right? It's just going to be chilling there. It cannot get uh, to the rest of our LAC operon to do the beta-galactosidase beta and all that stuff. So if the repressor is there, nothing happens. But if the repressor is not there, RNA polymerase is going to move normal, except if we have our CAP. Now the CAP is going to um, go to the promoter region, but we have to bring CAMP over and it has to bind to the CAP first in order to um, go to that promoter area. So once that happens, it'll attach to our RNA polymerase and it's almost like a little uh, guy behind that's pushing RNA polymerase like, hey, faster, faster. Um, you can think of RNA polymerase almost like a horse, and this guy is like in the stagecoach in the back, like saying like, come on, horse, faster, faster, that kind of thing. But anyway, okay. So that's the end of section one. Um, we're going to talk about, now, I told you in this chapter, we're talking mostly about bacterial cells, which is the operon, because they're, they're a lot simpler in bacterial cells, prokaryotic cells. If we're talking about us, multicellular organisms, uh, gene exp expression is going to be different for every single cell, and that's cell specialization. So every cell is going to have a different function. All of our cells in our body, for the most part, except for our sex cells, are going to be genetically identical. So the DNA is going to be the same in all of our cells, no matter what. All right, I just told you the sex cells is the only weird you know thing for that. Um, when we have these cells, the, or the DNA, the expression of this DNA is going to be different between our cells. Now we hope most of the time for like heart cells, it should be the same. 
uh, for lung cells, it should be the same. We should be expressing the same genes because those cells share the same function. However, with a lung cell and a heart cell, if we compare the two together, hopefully they are expressing uh, different genes. If we have abnormalities in what genes are express, expressed by certain cells, we can get different diseases, we can get cancer, okay, things like that. All right, we'll go through all this, guys. The top one, this is our normal, everything is, is good here. Um, we go through transcription, we go through RNA processing, that way we can get rid uh, of our introns and just keep our exons. We get our uh, poly A tail and our G cap on both sides of our mRNA, and then we can go through translation to make our protein. Now, if translation occurs and we get a nice polypeptide out of it, everything is good. If we get down here, some, say something is wrong. I don't know what's wrong, but something is wrong with it. Maybe uh, the sequence is out of order, maybe there's just a mutation somewhere. We don't want that. So what's going to happen here, guys, is if our mRNA in any way is mutated or something wrong with it, that uh, mRNA is going to get degraded. If that happens in the mRNA, pro mRNA process, we just degrade it then. If we see there's a mistake going from mRNA to a protein, we will degrade the protein. In other words, get rid of it. How this is going to be done is, remember I said we have the G cap and the poly A tail from last chapter. The mRNA is going to be decapped. There is actually a decapping enzyme that's going to come by, and it's going to take that 5' prime G cap off. Uh, there's a specific enzyme uh, that's going to do that. We're not going to worry about the name of that. Um, and then we're going to have an exosome on the 3' prime end, and that's pretty much going to degrade the whole thing. All right. So the more complex an organism is, obviously we are very complex organisms, uh, the more complex an organism is, we are going to have more stages at regulating all of our gene expression. Like I said, guys, I wanted to concentrate more on our cell, or I'm sorry, bacterial cells and our cells just because ours do have uh, so many more stages compared to prokaryotic cells. But anyway, so the other thing I wanted to mention on this slide, guys, is I know for us we have, uh, you know, 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. We are very complex organisms. The more chromosomes you have really doesn't make a more complex organism. I know hermit crabs have like a hundred and something chromosomes, okay? So they obviously are not more complex than us, but they do have more chromosomes. Our chromosomes are much bigger, though, in size compared to the hermit crabs. So don't think, um, you know, just the more chromosomes you have, the more complex you are. All right, we're going to skip this one for now. We'll come back to that later. So before we get into our chromosomes, making our chromosomes, going through, uh, into mitosis from interphase and all this stuff, we have chromatin. So chromatin, if you remember, is the uncondensed version of DNA. And then during prophase, whether it's uh, of mitosis or meiosis, during prophase we are going to take that chromatin, we are con going to condense it into chromosomes, we're going to get rid of the nucleus, all that good stuff. All right. Now, when we have our chromatin, it is going to be stored in our nucleus, wrapped around histone proteins. Now, these histone proteins can wrap it really tightly or a little bit looser. So we're going to have some different forms of chromatin depending on how tightly the DNA is wrapped around the histones. So we're going to have two different molecules we can attach to our um, histone proteins. The first one is called acetyl groups. So A-C-E-T-Y-L, acetyl groups. The other one is going to be called methyl groups. So there is, like I said, two different types of uh, chromatin. Our first one, if we attach acetyl groups to it, right, what's going to happen is our chromatin is going to be looser. So the histone protein 
is not going to wrap the DNA as tightly. In these areas where we have um, acetyl groups or we have acetylation occurring there, this is the DNA that is probably going to go through transcription. On the other hand, if we add methyl groups to it, that histone protein is going to wrap the DNA really, 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 really tight. This is called um, sorry guys. This is called heterochromatin. So if we add acetyl groups to it, it's let me write it down on the slide. There we go. Okay. So if we add our methyl groups to it. This is called heterochromatin. I'll turn the lights back on in a second. All right. So methyl groups, that is going to condense our chromatin. On the other hand, if we add our acetyl groups to it, that's going to loosen up our chromatin. And this is called U, EU, chromatin. So those are your two different forms of chromatin. We have heterochromatin, which is highly um, coiled around our histones. We also have euchromatin, E-U-C-H-R-O-M-A-T-I-N. Sorry, my writing isn't the best. But those are our two different types.